I know there is that year 4 chess game poster where it ended up the first hand was Astraea's, so many assumed the other hero would also be a knight. I'm going to shut down this theory by showing you it was just the knight breach commander's gauntlet. You know, the guy whose head's rolling in that one season pass emote. I think it's safe to say they aren't the new hero. Did you miss me? You punk ass motherfuckers can't hold me down! I've been shot seven times and I'm still breathing! Alright, in hindsight, I'm glad I never said something stupid like, if the next hero is a knight, I'll delete my channel. At least for now, it looks like my theory about Yubi adding story mode heroes is holding up, and we can cross the campaign's lawbringer off that list. Oh, brother, this guy stinks! Before we go any further, I want to give a huge thank you and shout out to the man who made the thumbnail for this video, and I'm gonna butcher the pronunciation of the name despite you literally writing it out, <laughs> Rion Caliberty Art. I highly recommend you check out his other work, I've got a link down to it in the description below. In that aforementioned Future of For Honor video, I analyzed this year 4 artwork, and unlike me, some people correctly theorized that the chess players were Apollyon and Holden Cross. Which foreshadowed the new heroes being Apollyon, or at least the spirit of Apollyon, and Holden Cross. Congratulations you slash Porno Magnum and anyone else that predicted this. If I could, I'd reward you with a scavenger crate, but I don't have that power. And just like the Warmonger reveal, I should have seen that the hero has literally been right in front of us this whole time. Unlike Apollyon, who is definitely dead and has been replaced with an angsty look-alike, Holden is very much alive, just older, and he's ready to help the Resistance and once again stand up to Heathmore's antagonistic Warmonger. Do you even know how fucked you are? The last time we saw Holden was at the end of the campaign, working with Ayu and Stagandir to achieve peace between the factions. Peace. Oh, damn. <laughs> Like that's ever gonna happen. According to some lore I dug up, and by dug up I mean googled it, Holden has since joined up with some mercenaries and fought alongside members of other factions, picking up some new fighting techniques along the way, as well as a new weapon, the Bardish. In the reveal trailer, Holden recounts how he was given the name Griffin. It was given to me by people who could have left me to die. But instead, they taught me the true meaning of courage. Historically, griffins were creatures symbolizing strength, courage, intelligence, and leadership, and physically, griffins were a mix between a lion and an eagle. I am unhappy to report that Olden Cross is not some mythical beast that is half giant cat and half bird of prey. However, as he fought alongside various factions, he is part knight, viking, samurai, and Wu Lin, and this is reflected in his armor and weapons. I also think it's hilarious that we now have a knight whose viking armor is better than his knight armor, and that viking armor is better than most of, if not all, other vikings armor. And yet they are both still eclipsed by his ability to cosplay as Big Chingus. However, since his face is pretty much always visible, enjoy running around seeing Holden and his clones everywhere you go. Griffin's cross-faction history also means he has access to some outfits and effects that are locked to the other factions. And just like Warmonger before him, each of the armor pieces have an alternate version that modifies it slightly, and purchasing the hero bundle will unlock an ornament from the story mode. In this case, it's the lions on the shoulders that Lawbringer mains have been begging for and now will never see. I can already see the sad mortems in the comment section. Otherwise, Griffin is pretty much the opposite of Warmonger. Instead of a tyrannical female speaking whatever language your game is set to, hiding behind a mask with good knight armor, Griffin is a heroic male speaking various languages, unafraid to show his face with bad knight armor. Look, it's designed well, but it's not a knight. Griffin's emotes also reflect this, and in some cases, Holden hasn't changed and keeps hurting himself. I've also taken the liberty of showcasing all the oh-so-important emote spam so you know which emotes to prioritize.
Well, that was pretty lackluster considering this is the same guy who blessed us with this. Also like Warmonger, Griffin has access to four unique executions. He's also got access to the death by catapult, spears, and arrows executions. Sadly, not all at once. He's also got two unique signatures of his own. As well as the fire breathing and rebellious impulse signatures. And yes, in case you were wondering, flipped over can ledge opponents. Lastly, new season means new battle pass, and Griffin can get these rewards as well, including a new execution, signature, and new outfits and effects. To call Griffin a defensive powerhouse would be an understatement. You're up against the wall, and I am the fucking wall! Griffin has spent years fighting alongside members of the other factions, not only picking up some of their moves, but also some of their dialects. In any case, many of you are probably wondering how the Griffin compares to his original counterpart, the Lawbringer. Aside from the funny flip move and some repurposed animations, they're pretty different. And no, Griffin doesn't even say the haha ad mortem line. Regardless, I'll do a breakdown showcasing what tools Holden has picked up and which he's abandoned since donning a new title. Griffin's got all versions of a 3 hit chain, meaning he can switch between light and heavy attacks as he pleases, whereas Lawbringer is missing 3 options. Lawbringer's sidelights are enhanced, meaning chains aren't interrupted if they're blocked while Griffin has double tap opener lights if the first connects, giving him easy access to his mid-chain bash. Griffin can throw a kick after the second attack in a combo, while Lawbringer can only shove after a heavy. If the bashes connect, Griffin gets a chain ending heavy, and Lawbringer is guaranteed a light attack that can begin another chain. If Griffin whiffs the kick, he cannot follow up with the heavy, unlike Lawbringer who can still throw attacks after a whiff shove. Instead of throwing the kick, Griffin can opt to catch players who may predict it with an undodgeable light finisher. He's also traded in his unblockable finisher heavies for hyper armor finisher heavies. Both heroes can begin chains with a bash that lead into the second move in their chains, even if they whiff. Lawbringer must dodge left, right, or forward first, while Griffin can shove from neutral. They both guarantee a light attack if they connect, and they do not wall splat. As for the funny flip move, Lawbringer's is an unblockable attack that must be dodged, and he gets a free side heavy if it connects. Meanwhile, Griffin can do it on the run, but it's a directional attack coming out of the right side, so you can parry it, and it only gives him frame advantage if it connects. Instead of various situational parry punishes, Griffin's retaliating light, heavy, or zone gains hyper armor. Similar to how Lawbringer's parry into zone attack has it, but that one's also unblockable. Griffin's zone attack counts as the first move in a chain. Griffin has side and forward dodge heavies, as well as a forward dodge light attack that all count as the second move in a chain, meaning it leads directly into the bash or undodgeable light mix-up. Finally, on guard break, Griffin's light or heavy attack will count as the second attack in a chain. If you opt to throw an opponent, it leads directly into the third attack, meaning your wall splat punish is a 32 damage heavy. Based on all of that, I personally wouldn't draw the conclusion that Holden has become Lawbringer 2.0. However, when you look at his new feats, you could easily call him the Anti-Warmonger. Yeah, I'm treading back to the Warmonger comparison again. Where her corruption feats eradicate foes, Griffin's healing feats aid teammates. Thankfully, there's a medic dozer I can pull voice lines from. Good news! Free healthcare! Bad news! I'm your doctor! Two words! Get the fuck up! Results are back! You're a bitch! Griffin's unique feats revolve around keeping him and his allies on their feet, as, like Warmonger's Corruption, the Draconite feats have an area of effect. In this case, though, they heal Holden and his allies within the space. Stern Stare reduces a target's damage, including their feats. 
Draconite Mist heals yourself and nearby allies. Draconite Bolt shoots an enemy with a crossbow and heals nearby allies. And Draconite Cleanser is a holy hand grenade. For the most part, the feats are straightforward, and there aren't many surprises. But that doesn't mean I couldn't test a few things. Okay, so Griffin isn't quite the cure to Warmonger's corruption, but his ability to heal nearby allies with 3 out of 4 feats and the other feat lowering enemy damage is still something that ensures he's likely to have the numbers advantage against his enemies. And it's a hard counter to heroes that can apply bleed. Personally, I'm actually surprised the devs didn't go full support and make the tier 1 remove debuffs such as corruption from allies. I think that would be absolutely busted. <laughs> Okay, dumb opinion time. The damage on Griffin's heavy after the kick is dumb. Eating the kick means taking 28 damage, while the finisher light deals half of that. I'd rather take my chances dodging. Maybe all this cross-faction armor for Griffin is a hint at seeing more in the future for the other heroes, and I think that would be really cool. But when there's some year one DLC heroes that don't have their new sets, I think a lot of people would be disappointed if it ended up being cross-faction sets as opposed to their own style sets. I'm gonna make some new predictions for the future of For Honor based on the new information that we have learned since that video. Now that Apollyon, or at least the spirit of Apollyon, is back in the form of Warmonger and Holden Cross has returned as Griffin, it'd be really strange to not see figures like Ayu, Tozen, or Stigandir to come back in some shape or form. After all, like Apollyon and Holden, they have moves or cosmetics people have been begging for since release. I also previously shot down the speculation of changing up the faction war. It seems like now that there's a figurehead for the Resistance to face Astrea, it's a good time to shake things up, but nothing's been announced yet. I'd personally like to see them do it, because it's weird to see the knights, vikings, and samurai still fighting in the faction war when everything lore-wise is Horkos versus Chimera. That and maybe the bloody volcano meme will finally die. If they do change it to this, the start of year 5 seems like the opportune time to me, with more people getting new consoles for the holidays and the 60fps update will hopefully be up and running with no problems. It'd be a way to welcome back people to a new chapter in For Honor. Changing it to a two-sided faction war also opens up the door for some team-based events where a team consisting of only Horkos players face off against Chimera players, and the outcomes of these events directly influence the lore. This is all just optimistic speculation, though. Finally, we have the testing ground changes, which many people seem to be forgetting are testing ground changes. Everyone's saying, oh, these changes, these changes. It's, no, these are proposed changes. We may not see them be implemented. So, because of that, I'm not gonna dive in too deep on them when there are more competent players who will give more proper insight. However, there is one thing my dumbass can provide insight on, it's that I think the removal of hyper armor on Shigoki's hug was not a good move. Otherwise, that's it. Year 4's fourth and final season, Mayhem, alongside the return of Olden Cross as the Griffin. What are your thoughts on the Griffin, and if you'll be playing him, what armor will you be dressing him up in? I'd like to thank you for watching, thank For Honor for that super cool early access, and everyone who took the time to play with me. Again, huge shout out to Rayon Caleverty Art for the amazing thumbnail. It is super appreciated, and honestly, I am in love with it. It is beautiful. I'd also like to thank my supporters on YouTube and Patreon, especially Bioballs and Isaiah. Have a great day, and I will see you on the battlefield.